Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the channel. Happy birthday to my company. That's right, guys. We've been on the YouTube for one year now. Um, I think 27 videos on that and about 430 subscribers. So first of all, thank you so, so much, guys. Um, I said, this is just a, a, a thing on the side for me, should we a little side project, but it's fun for me to show you what I do. Um, and today I'm gonna to show you something very, very cool indeed. Um, so I thought, yeah, as we've done one year in YouTube now, let me go back and show you some of the stuff that I've done God, many, many moons ago. Um, we'll be jumping back 12 years to a point where I didn't even own Creative Car Sounds. Um, and I worked with a gentleman called Andy, who you'll hear about in a second, who's an absolute legend at this stuff. Um, but as you can see, we're in a slightly different place today. This is my uh, garage away from work, should we say, or at least a garage with a lot of cars in it. Some other fun stuff there. Uh, that's the car we're gonna be talking about in a second. These are a bit of fun. Probably the only car audio thing in here is these speaker boxes up here. There's one there and one there. Built these years ago, I called them Zs because of the side profile. You can probably see a little Z shape on there. And um, basically they're Vibe, Black Death, six by nine, three away components. I'll show you up on there built into a little custom box. Decided to throw some lighting on it, because why not? Um, but yeah, hella bassy speakers for indoors. Um, and then there's something else that I built. I'm always building stuff to be fair, always tinkering. Right, let me show you what we're gonna be talking about today. And that happens to be when Spiker invited Creative Car Sounds, i.e. myself, Andy and Stuart, to go down to a, a secret location and discuss upgrading two gift cars they were doing because it was changing ownership of the company um, and they wanted to give the leaving CEO some nice presents. So I'll talk about this and also another one we did for them. So what we've got there is a Spiker CA Aileron. Um, didn't really know much about them when I heard that we were gonna be in the work of them. Did a little bit of research, found out a few odd things, but yeah, quite a secretive company. Um, definitely, definitely don't see many of them around um, and absolutely stunning. So we all jumped in the van, went up to the secret location, and the first thing I saw when we went into the workshop was that sitting there. Now, absolutely stunning, guys. I think you have to admit that just in that color, the way with the pop with the yellow interior, that looks stunning. So yeah, as you can tell, we're talking about some serious cars here. That looks absolutely awesome. All the little details, everything. So it was a case of, me, Andy and Stuart went up there. Um, actually, yeah, let me just give a shout out to Andy because I've not mentioned him on the channel yet. And he was with me for years and years and years. An absolute, just awesome dude. So there he is himself, Andy. I'm sure he'll love the pictures that I'm gonna throw up of him. Um, but he was so skillful, to be honest. Really hands-on, just you gave him a problem to do and he just smashed it, to be honest. Um, very funny guy and that, always mucking about. So, uh, and he, to be honest, Although I took over the shop and he'd been working there a lot, lot longer than me, instant respect for him, to be fair. So uh, thank you very much for that dude, always from the start. I don't think I've ever told you that. Um, even when I was out doing one of these, he was at the shop working hard. So uh, let's just say there was a few late nights I know that he he put the hours in for sure. Um, so thank you so much that dude. And you're a legend and I miss you, bro. And I'm so sorry that I caught you with your hand in the teal and obviously I had to let you go, mate. But you yeah, know, I love you, bro. Catch you around, man. Right. And obviously that is Stuart as well. Uh, that's the guy who previously owned Creative Car Sounds and gave me the honor of buying it and carrying on. And I think this was his last big job for them. Um, and then thankfully I got the next job onward from that. And I'll talk about that maybe in another video. Um, I guess I'm gonna make a deal here. If we reach a thousand subscribers, I'll tell you about the time that I worked on probably one of the most famous vehicles in the world. But anyway, so that's Stuart there. Um, Right, so obviously we've gone up to the secret location and we're having a look over the vehicle and the thing that's really standing out to me is that we can't adapt this vehicle in any sort of manner. It would be sacrilege to sort of change any of that dashboard, what's going on there. It's just stunning in there. The brushed aluminium effect, the way the dials work, everything else. So you can see it's it never would deserve to have a, a hole cut in that. So as a case of, right, well, how do we get around this issue? Um, the customer was quite specific. They wanted quite a lot of toys. They wanted things like iPod. They wanted things like navigation. They wanted potentially digital radio, which was quite new at the time. But before we get too far into work mode, let me show you a bit more what, what was at this little secret location I went to. Um, the most stunning body shop and workplace I'd ever seen in regards to what, what they were doing. As you can see, proper layout. 
There's a little white car you can see up the very end there. I'll come back to that. It's a really, really cool car. Um, but loads of prototype body shells, aluminium monocoques. It's, yeah, lovely bit. Aston Martin concepts there. Um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about that, but we'll just skip on from that one. Um, silly things like two-door Range Rover conversions. Really nicely done, though, with all the right way of doing it, with the new custom glass, everything made proper. So really nice little fun stuff you can do there. So this thing was cool. This is another Spyker. I'd not seen these before um, anywhere in the world ever. And I don't think I've ever seen even a picture of one up to this day. So, yeah, again, I'll probably get in loads of trouble for this if this isn't meant to go out. But, hey, go, it's that many years ago had the most beautiful roof. Now the amount of work that has to go in to produce a panel like that, um, if you look at where the glass meets, for instance, it's got all the vent area things so the rain can get out. They, they thought of every little detail, um, just absolutely stunning on the outside. It sort of has that bubble effect as well, as you can't, that you can't really see from this angle, but from the front edge of the glass, as it peers over, it does do like a double bubble bit. So really, really nice on that. Um, yet again, typical for Spiker, the interiors are just stunning. Like, old school meets perfect finish it's just everything was spot on so obviously we knew we had to do a nice bit of work for this one this was that little white car and this was cool this impressed me um so imagine two door little roadster you're out driving around and it starts to rain you want to jump in grab a coffee somewhere something like that um you press a button and it seals itself up so you can see the windscreen there is flat the windscreen rises up first then the two panels that meet essentially where the center section is, they move towards the door area and drop downwards, and then obviously the door can spring open. So a really cool little concept car. Don't think it'll ever get produced. Um, it's that many years ago now that I feel that it would have been on the market or something would have been said about it. Um, yet again, hope I don't get in trouble for these pictures. But So anyway, so back to the cars that we were doing. Um, this bike had like a concept facelift body look on it. I can't remember the exact details because like I said it was a while back. Uh, but it had a custom front bumper and they had some issues and down to the VIN registration and to do with the way that the headlights weren't high enough and things. There was a lot of little laws and little rules that they had to use for the uh, UK market. Um, the white one behind is called cool. another convertible. Um, the only thing we really had to do in that one, to be honest, was just a simple sound upgrade running on what the basic system was. Um, and it ran sort of like a basic streaming option. So nothing too complex on that. I'm probably not even going to talk about that in this video, to be fair. But this grey one with the orange interior front, that's the one that we had a lot of fun on. Yeah, you can see how nice these are. Just really nice to look at cars. Really nice to be around them. So I'll say, and then back to our dilemma where we've got this dashboard to sort of overcome. Um, and because he wants satellite navigation and iPod control and things, there has to be a user interface. There has to be something that we can press or touch or do something with so we can control it. And obviously sat nav, the best sat navs are visual so you can actually see what's coming up on it. Um, so we're scratching our heads for a while and looking around different options on the market and there wasn't a hell of a lot, but there was one little product that popped up um, a little Kenwood unit, and to be honest, it was a saving grace for this job because without this unit, I don't know what we would have used, to be fair. So it came as a little screen like that. It was a four-inch screen, tiny little thing. Um, and obviously you could use, uh, it was all touchscreen, so you could use all the facilities for it. It was sort of the ideal item. Um, came with a nice little hideaway sort of AV controller, and this is where you've got to plug all your extras in. So the, the benefit of this is it solved the problem for the digital, it solved the problem for the iPod, solved the problem for the navigation, because we can get these little add-ons, um, and essentially we could add all these options to it. So that really fitted the bill for what we needed for that one. So I'm very happy with that side of it. Bought parts, brought them up to back up to the secret location, trial fitted them to work out where we can hide certain bits. So the hideaway unit, there's an amplifier that also gets hidden on behind there as well. Um, and obviously you can see there we've got the startings of what would be the subwoofer arrangement at the bottom. How much space that we could take up essentially with the box section, what sort of subwoofer we can get in there, what sort of cubic foot. We weren't allowed to go mad, it had to be quite sort of like within keeping of the car, which I think both me and Andy agreed that yes, definitely it has to because of the way that the car looks. We, we don't want to change their style and their style is really nice. So we sort of worked with what we had there to be fair. Um, so we went and loved that day up there, um, went up there and essentially just had a little muck about with some fiberglass on a body panel, just getting some basic moulds just so we can work out some sizing contours, whether it looks right for instance. And you can see it did. So after a lot of work, to be honest, I've not got any pictures of us actually doing the work or anything. This was way, way before I even thought about vlogging or, or YouTube was, yeah, it was about 12 years ago, but I don't think it was as popular as anything as it is now. So... 
and you can see there the light up and that really gave us sort of the, the starting point to make this job a really nice finished job so everything got controlled up on the roof lining then we can keep that beautiful dashboard exactly how it was you can see there had all the things so we put them in a custom little ipod dock there um, cable went straight in so it was a, a nice little upgrade for it speaker wise so essentially we were allowed to go sort of any way we wanted with it um and both big fans of the old alpine type r's for one real reason the fact they give you very good quality um, and they last a hell of a long time so it's not the sort of car that you want to take off every year and a half or two years because the speakers are fairly or something once you've got a solid speaker in there it will last a hell of a long time so as you can see they're lovely little grills that we got made up so i took ages polishing everything through um tweeters worked really nice up on the dashboard sort of readapting what was the old air vent piece um and then obviously had that redirected down underneath and obviously the tweet is really nicely fitted up in there so we didn't have to get too much involved in that because obviously the style in it was already great subwoofer wise so we threw a pioneer slimline 12 inch down there um as you know i believe it was a 10 inch thinking about it um and that's just to deal with the lower frequencies but yeah really nice worked out really good in there as you can see the grill just looks awesome so so really nice from that um and yeah that is the best part i think about one of these cars and i think you've seen it from the rear yet just i'll shut up for a minute so you can see how stunning that is is that not just the perfect rear end i'm not sure something about it is just hell yeah yeah really really good looking car as you can see and obviously we solved the problem with that interior so I think for that guys it's come out kind of good in here that probably deserves a thumbs up on the video to be able to get everything they need in that car without changing anything but to be honest this isn't the toughest challenge i've had by far like i say if i reach that thousand subscriber mark i'll tell you about a job where we had to do a lot of control and we was given one button to use and that was a real head scratcher so there we go guys hope you enjoyed story time with neil um, there is a lot more stuff I could actually do on this computer if this is the sort of thing that interested you or not. Um, leave a comment if you like story time with Neil. We won't call it that. Um, but no, thank you so much for the last year, guys. Really, really cool. I think we've had like 45,000 views in total and all. Um, and like I say, about 430 subscribers. So I'm really touched by that, to be honest, guys, because I, I literally thought it would be at a 50, 60 probably even less than that to be honest and that's so but anyway loads of this sort of stuff coming up if you want um and like i say there is a very very cool project car that i can talk about also um but yeah i guess the next one you'll see me back in the shop working on another car um hope you had a great day as always and uh thank you very much for viewing and i'll catch you on the next one happy birthday dear creative car sounds happy birthday to me